favela nunca foi reduto de marginal. A favela nunca foi reduto de marginal. Ela só tem gente humilde marginalizada. E essa verdade não sai no jornal. A favela é um problema social. I pray you don't know the language of fire alarms. I pray you're not woken from your sleep by the smell of charcoal. I pray you have a fire extinguisher for a father and a burn surgeon for a brother. I pray a festival is the only thing you know of a burning man. I pray it's never useful to know that petrol eliminates gunpowder trace. I pray you've never smelt the gas leak of your mother's pain. I pray you don't know what I'm talking about and that you never grew up in the fist of these blocks. I pray the morning light kisses you on your cheek. I pray your days are floating lanterns. stripes on your clothes held your head high like you were neck deep in the source you found the cheat codes for us lot on the blocks and now you light this place up on your terms and take the piss like your bodily fluid was lighter fluid because now you know your skin is not firewood a body of signal fire living in a home with more exit wounds than fire exits you know not to torch the world your mother put so much into building our sun is never in your nature you know you can be light without being fire you can still wake them up and be heard without being an alarm and if they don't see you you let them hear you because lightning and thunder are the same thing and if they don't see you you let them hear you remember lightning and thunder are the same thing This is called Parables. At last we watch these cities topple. I swear this beast will eat itself. It feasts itself into digestion and it's shitting us out in a mess of rejected intestines. But we weakly willed, we'll cry tears when we hear that the beast is killed because each has spilled themselves before it and begged that the beast should eat its fill. And yes, people still believe that their rewards are gonna come. That's why they're keeping still, heeding the shrill pitch of its persuasion and living each day for the next temptation. Cause they extended the invitation. We coaxed the beast down from the hills. We said, come, come wreck our hearts. Come fill our hands with wealth and don't show no mercy. Ah. But the beast, it fooled us. It told us it loved us when really it ruled us. It subtly screwed us all down into place while we wept in its name and we begged for a taste. You see, when it's all so easy to grab, we get complacent. Our sense is defenseless against the invasion of hostile forces parading as friendly. It feels like we got so much that it left us empty. So then we got more in a frenzy to fill up the void, but the void is increasing. It seems we're all speaking so much we've lost meaning. It seems we're all deep in the guts of this demon. But this ain't no overblown theory. I ain't saying this is the work of no secret pact. What I'm saying is this is the outcome of consumer identity and that is the beast at our back. 
And it has the support of the courts and the law. So now we can't trust justice because she just feeds the beast jaws with the bodies that arrive in a heap on the floor. And now the jails are all flooded with the blood of the poor. We must be like the water and head back to the source. Instead, we're grinning away while the rot rocks our core. But what for? Our smiles are locked doors and our hearts are not sure that we even want more. The meaning of mine isn't mine anymore. It's not yours. But you lot here. You are not a lost cause. Still, these are the times of the parables. These are the times of the freeborn mind, self manacled Times prophesied by the ancients when the days are so full that they've made us vacant. But just love. Be filled with love and have strength enough to be still when shoved. See, the filth and the rust can't corrupt the goodness that fills your blood. And all truth is built on trust. And it's up to us to move, right? Because moves must get made. So be bare face in this masquerade. See, too many hearts have grayed in the dullness of days, but our hearts are displayed as we charge on like it's the last parade. We don't believe that we can't be saved. We believe in change and we believe it transpires when we need it. But the ships that we sail are not see fit. It's the these vessels filled with the chaos of commerce that are leading us into the wreckage. But I swear, we're at the helm. We've got the tillers in hand. And the truth that was lost, we can still understand. We need to build bridges over this splintered land before the hourglass cracks and it spills its sand. I thought it was okay. I could understand the reasons. They said there might be a man or a nervous child seeing this small piece of flesh that they weren't quite expecting. So I whispered and tiptoed with nervous discretion. But after six months of her life sat sitting on lids, sipping on milk, nostrils sniffing on piss, trying not to bang her head on toilet roll dispensers, I wonder whether these public loo feeds offend her. I'm getting tired of discretion and being polite. As my baby's first sips are drowned, drenched in shite, I spent the first feeding months of her beautiful life, feeling nervous and awkward and wanting everything right. Surrounded by family till I stepped out the house. It took me eight weeks to get the confidence to go into town. Now the comments around me cut like a knife as I rush into toilet cubicles, feeling nothing like nice. Because I'm giving her milk that's not in a bottle. Wishing the cocaine generation white powder would topple us. pyramid sales pitches across our green globe and female breasts banned. Unless they're out just for show. And the more I go out, the more I can't stand it. I walk into town, feel I'm surrounded by bandits. Cos in this country are billboards covered in tits and family newsagent magazines full of it. WH Smith top shelves out for men, why don't you complain about them then? In this country of billboards covered in tits and family newsagent magazines full of it, WH Smith top shelves out for men, I'm getting embarrassed in case a small flash of flesh might offend. And I am not trying to parade this. I don't want to make a show. But when I'm told I'd be better just staying at home. And when another friend I know is thrown off a bus and another mother told to get out of a pub, even my grandma said maybe I was sexing it up. And I'm sure the milkmakers love all this fuss, all the cussing and worry and looks of disgust as another mother turns from nipples to powder, ashamed or embarrassed by comments around her and as I hold her head up and pull my cardi across and she sips on that liquor made by everyone's God, I think for God's sake Jesus drank it. So did Siddhartha, Mohammed and Moses and both of their fathers, Ganesh and Shiva and Brigid and Buddha and I'm sure they weren't doing it, sniffing on shit as their mother sat embarrassed on cold toilet lids in a country of billboards covered in tits. In a country of low-cut tops, cleavage and skin. In a country of cloth bags and recycling bins. And as I desperately try to take all of this in, I hold her head up. I can't get my head round. The anger towards us and not to the sound of lorries offloading formula milk into countries where water runs dripping in filth. In towns where breasts are oasis of life, now dried up in two for one offers enticed by labels and logos and gold standard rights claiming breast milk is healthier, powdered and white. Packaged and branded and sold at a price so that nothing is free in this money fueled life which is fine if you need it or prefer to use bottles where water is clean and bacteria boil. But in towns where they drown in pollution and sewage, bottled kids die and they knew that they'd do it. In towns where pennies are savoured like sweets, we are now paying for one thing that has always been free. In towns empty of hospital beds, babies die, diarrhea fueled that breast milk would end. 
So no more will I sit on these cold toilet lids, no matter how embarrassed I feel as she sips. Cos in this country of billboards, covered in tits, I think I should try to get used to this.